Well, the day has come to do the barn tour. I warn you, the lighting's gonna be rough in here, but we're gonna do our best. We've got a lot to show you. And it only makes sense to start with a little fish footage to get us in the mood for the fish barn tour. Some may wonder how I get these plants watered and I'll admit they only get it about every two weeks. Um, but it stays really humid in here, as you can imagine, with all these open top tanks. So we're going to go ahead and climb up the ladder. You'll notice that I get a little tense once I get up onto the top step there. But I've gotten more comfortable as time goes on. Honestly, being barefoot seems to be even more comfortable to me. So I put on shoes for you guys. Getting the ladder around when there was construction material all over the place was definitely a bit more challenging, but it's been a breath of fresh air lately. And I found today that I could fit this ladder around all of them. I used to have to use two different ladders, so simplifying the process will just mean more care for the plants as time goes on. We're gonna dive into each of these to see what they're all about. So here's the view from up at the ladder. Lots to see. We're gonna go up one more step. All right. So here's my golden pothos. One of them, I've got two. But this one is my oldest one, I think. I've kind of lost track. It trails down on this side here. We'll see it when we go down this row. The little aloe that could. Um, this was my original one that I had pulled seven babies out of last year and sold a few of them have one of them two of them at the house um and then this one here so it's it's been on a journey it's searching for light this is a conversation we'll have a lot today is those that are searching for light and here we go this is my white butterfly arrowhead um kind of the main mother one she is amazing i really love her had her for a long time and then this one um, I have one at the house, and I butchered the name in that video. Uh, Raphidoria tetrasperma? Yeah, that's it. So it's sometimes called a mini monstera, but it's not actually a monstera. Um, it's from a completely different region than monsteras. But it is beautiful, and it really grows in kind of a vine, as you can see. It's trying to vine. Uh, this little bit up here was its original piece. It l dropped its leaves, but then started growing out from the base. So, whatever. I need to get him a moss pole like quite a few of them at the house, but really love this plant. Oh, here is my other golden pothos. This one's freshly had some cuttings off of her, so she looks a little abrupt, but she was trailing quite along down over the side here. Um, really pretty plant. I wish it was a little bit more full, but since I just gave her fertilizer today, I'm sure that will help. This is one of the ZZ plants that I propagated not too long ago. I had done a video when I separated it. And this is a Moonlight Philodendron. I wish it was doing a little bit better, but it has been overwatered a time or two. And it's very humid in here. Which is odd because they really do like humidity, but it's also this area right here probably gets the least light. Um, Turning around here, you see there's nothing coming out of there. It's just that it's kind of in the middle of the room. So we're going to get some lights put in right up here. As soon as Lucas gets new lights on his fish tank, I will get the leftover fish tank lights to go right above our heads here. One here and then one on the last rack that we were just at as well. This is one of the Berry Illusion arrowheads. I really like this one. It's on my porch at the house and I've got a ton of cuttings, actually a hundred, that I just pulled out of a container from the porch. This poor thing is going with me to the house today. Um, it's the Maria Arrowhead. I had one at the house that is looking so much better, but it is smaller. Um, this thing just isn't getting enough light, so it's not even unfurling its leaves. So we're taking it home so it can join its friends in rehab row and come back to its beautiful pink bronzy prettiness. 
You will be beautiful again. This is my Norfolk Pine. I've had it for quite a few years now. Um, it's really three different ones kind of all in there together. They used to be in a tiny little pot, as you can see why they're placed so close together. Um, but I've given them room to grow. They seem to be enjoying it. We'll see what their future holds. And up here next to the desk area, we've got an areca palm that I got from my mom when I first moved in here. It had survived Indiana winter and then I threw it into a Florida summer. So been on a journey, but as you can see, she's got some new leaves coming out. Um, and I'm super excited that it seems to be liking it here in the barn. This is the mother of all my Boston ferns. I've had her the longest and is the main pot that I separated all the others from. She's also putting out some new growth since getting used to her new spot here. So happy to see she's doing all right. And then trailing along the edge here is my green pothos, if you can't tell yet. But um, yeah, it doesn't like to grow a whole lot from the top, but it does have one really, really, really long vine that just goes for days. I've cut it a few times, um, but it does finally have some new growth coming out the top here. So I'm happy for that. That's a ZZ plant that actually we got at the uh, fish club meeting one time. So that one is not from my original pot and I'm excited to have at least, you know, one different variety. They look like they're both the same type at least, but I don't know. This is a little baby snake plant. I have my big one at the house. This one I just started from some cuttings and then, you know, they start replicating down there. So they're doing really well out here. Um, seems to be very happy. And next to it, we have one of the ZZ plants that was from my uh, original pot that I showed you an unboxing of. It did lose one of its little pieces here. It's still kind of hanging in there. I've tried to pull it a couple times, so I'm going to leave it because what's in there might still sprout some new growth out. We'll see. But this one I learned when I propagated this from the original mother. This was way too long of a piece, so I'm going to come in here with my trimmers and like cut this thing down to here so then I can root this part again probably cut this into two or three pieces. Um, and then same for this one here. It worked, but its main job when you propagate them is that you put it in here so that it can create roots and the new pieces. It doesn't regrow from the original root uh, leaf. Sansevieria. All right, and we've still got some along the back row here. Well, this just got a little more difficult. <laughs> Lucas put this up here and we both liked the idea, but I did not think about the logistics. Um, it's because this is his plumbing pipe that's going over to this rack. The well's over here, so. It'll be pretty. This Dracenia has been doing wonderful gold dust. I think probably should have felt that to see if it was even wet. This poor thing, I think it's just been struggling for not getting enough light. I just moved it here a week or so ago and I can see it's got more purple on it than it did. It's the same plan as this, but they look nothing alike. This one's always thirsty. And this beauty over here is the mother to quite a few that I've sold and one that I've got at the house. Oh God. All right, just bringing you up on this side for a moment. Um, those are the ones we just saw from the other side. I forgot to highlight this Calathea. So the Brazil matches the one at the house. She's still a baby, but she'll be beautiful. This one <laughs> was a Swiss cheese Monstera plant. But as you can tell, she's lost all her variegation. Again, some brighter lighting up above her is going to make a world of difference. She's very confused by the light being over there. So I don't know. Shoot, maybe I should just guide this over into that fish tank. Ooh, we might do that next week. This was my original uh, gold dust croton. It had just one huge tall one when we moved here from Indy. And uh, that was a year and a half ago. It then spit out two more. I've propped them 
This one looks pretty dead. I think I can chop it off, but we've got two going in here. And then it made that baby down there at the end that's just gorgeous and bushy and colorful. Really does like it in here. This is a Hartley philodendron. I told you guys at the house I had one there on Rehab Row. I've always struggled with this plant. Um, I grow lots of other philodendrons wonderfully, but this one just struggles. So she's hanging in. I'm hoping the fertilizer I just gave her makes her happy. This is another one of the ZZ plants that I uh, separated uh, a couple months ago. I did a video on that. This is my mama Burl Marks philodendron. Um, just added cuttings of her to the website. She's so, so pretty. Um, very glossy leaves. They all have the same consistent horsehead sort of shape. I don't know, oblong shape, but they are so pretty. It's just such a beautiful plant. It's got a few different main stems off here. And then there's a new shoot coming up out of the other side, out of the ground. So we have a few pieces. I would like to do some more cuttings and make it a little bushier, I think. Um, but we'll see. This is also where we started and my gold pothos. That's probably the prettiest side over here. Um, again, I think all my plants are a little confused because they're up so high where there's only these ceiling lights. I don't know, it's just not quite enough of that real sunlight light that it needs. So we're gonna put one light here and one light here, just kind of behind the banister there. So everything here will get more. These guys, I'd really like to get a light put up here. We'll see if we get there sometime because they would like it to be above them, not beside them. And these are the last two. My green Maranta prayer plant here on this side. Um, this thing has been just such a beauty. <laughs> I love watching it grow and transform. It's taken many shapes over the last year or so, but no matter what, it is resilient. This is an Alocasia Calcutta here on the right. It's succulent-like, but I really do enjoy it. It's got these nice leaves that seem to be getting bigger. I think the stems got so long because it was over there next to the Boston fern and wasn't getting enough light. But here it seems to have perked up. So that's gonna do it for the barn plant room tour. I'll have to add these up as I'm editing, but we've covered a bit today. Thanks for being with me. Lucas is back there mowing somewhere today, so sorry he wasn't with us on this journey. But I figure I'll leave you with a little bit more fish footage because who doesn't love to see a giant collection of big rainbow fish? With a random Lucipinus catfish, a little Congo tetra coming up there in the middle. Oh, and there's a little shelly there at the bottom. Lots more fish in here, but these are the most personable. They're a lot of fun. This really does wrap it up for my plant tour, uh, part three. It's been quite the journey. Thank you all for coming along with me. And next up, we'll get into some more things outside of plants, catch you up on the outdoors and the baking.